With the latest Virginia Beach Fire Department news updates, here's Master Firefighter Stu Sayer. Hello, I'm Master Firefighter Stuart Sayer, and welcome to this edition of VBFD News Updates. The first annual Virginia Beach Fire and EMS Memorial Ceremony was held on Friday, September 27th at the Fire and EMS Training Center. The memorial is meant to commemorate the seven members of the Fire and EMS Departments who gave their lives in the line of duty. A special thanks to those of you who came out to attend the ceremony. Every year we will continue to honor and pay tribute to their sacrifice. On Monday, September 30th, 2013, District Chief David Wade retired from the Virginia Beach Fire Department after 32 years of dedicated service to the city of Virginia Beach. We couldn't let him go without the proper send-off, so thank you to all who called or stopped by Company 3 to say farewell. Congratulations again, Chief Wade, and best of luck to you on your next chapter in life. Beginning on October 1st and continuing through November, VBFD is having its fall company in service on high-rise firefighting with practical evolutions. The evolutions include hose packing and carries, advancing hose lines, and controlling elevators for rescue operations. The training will be held at the town center section of the city. On Wednesday, October 2nd, the Virginia Beach Fire Department held their 2013 annual awards ceremony at Lanstown High School. The recipient of the 2013 Firefighter of the Year Award, sponsored by Steel, went to Master Firefighter Craig Brown. Congratulations to all of the award recipients. The 2013 National Fallen Firefighters Memorial Ceremony was held on October 5th and 6th. In spite of the government shutdown, the ceremony to honor our 81 fallen brothers and sisters and their families still went on. It took the earnest efforts of many to show the families the fire service stood behind them no matter what. Many thanks to those of you who were there as well as to those of you who couldn't make it but still watch the ceremony via live stream at vbfdtv.com and on the local VBTV public access channel 46. We are certain the surviving family members left Emmitsburg with the assurance that their lost loved ones will never be forgotten. For those of you who would like to plan ahead, next year's ceremony will be held October 11th and 12th. We hope to see you there. This year's Structural Collapse Technicians School was held Saturday, October 12th through Saturday, October 19th at the Virginia Beach Fire and EMS Training Center. Rescue personnel always find this superior training class both exciting and rewarding. Students had the opportunity to spend an entire week learning various skills and techniques associated with rescue operations. This was definitely the place to be if you like a challenge to sharpen both your physical and mental skills. And now let's check out a few of our recent working incidents. On Saturday, September 21st, around 1715 hours, Engine 18 was dispatched to a reported residential fire in the 900 block of Banyan Drive. Upon arrival, crews found a 40-foot tree behind the residence burning internally from the base of the tree to about 25 feet up. A large tree branch was removed using a chainsaw to gain access via ladder to the burning area of the tree. The fire was quickly extinguished using a combination of foam and water. There were no civilian or firefighter injuries. The cause of the fire was undetermined. On Wednesday, September 25th, around 1910, Squad 10 arrived on the scene of a fatal car accident on I-64 eastbound at Indian River Road. Crews immediately positioned for an extrication of the two vehicles involved. One of the vehicles had extreme damage to the passenger compartment, which appeared to have rolled multiple times. The two occupants of that vehicle were found deceased. The passenger of the second vehicle was found unrestrained, lying face down across the back seat. He was rapidly extricated, placed on a backboard, and turned over to EMS for patient care and transport. Squad 10 and Ladder 9 proceeded to extricate the deceased victims in the first vehicle. The scene was then turned over to state police. The surviving driver of the second vehicle has since been charged with reckless driving, two counts of involuntary manslaughter as a result of driving under the influence, and driving on a suspended or revoked license three or more times in 10 years. 
On Thursday, September 26th, around 1615, Engine 7 was dispatched to a possible kitchen fire in the 3900 block of Edinburgh Drive. Upon arrival, smoke was seen from the second floor of the Alpha side, coming from an open window at the Alpha Bravo corner. Smoke was also seen from the Charlie side with fire visible in the kitchen of the home. Engine 7 positioned on the Alpha side and deployed an inch and three-quarter hand line making entry through the front door. Crews went directly through the structure into the kitchen and extinguished the fire. A working smoke detector allowed for the safe evacuation of all occupants. There were no firefighter or civilian injuries reported. The cause of the fire is believed to have been unattended food on the stove. On Friday, September 27th, around 1640, Engine 10 responded to a residential fire in the 5700 block of Oak Terrace Drive in the Avalon Terrace section of the city. Upon arrival, heavy smoke could be seen coming from the roof and gable vents of the structure. Engine 10 entered the front door of the structure to initiate an interior attack. Active fire was found in the attic of the home. The fire was quickly extinguished and subsequent searches revealed the structure to be clear of occupants. No injuries to civilians or fire personnel were reported. The cause of the fire is believed to have been the improper disposal of smoking material. On Saturday, September 28th, around 11.15 hours, Engine 20 responded to a residential structure fire in the 3000 block of Bray Road, located in the Linhaven section of the city. Engine 20 and Engine 16 quickly made entry into the structure for an interior attack. As the crews pulled the ceiling to gain access to the fire, they began fire suppression with an inch and three quarter hand line. The fire was quickly contained and knocked down. There were no civilian or fire personnel injuries reported. Three occupants had to be relocated due to the damage. The fire appeared to have started in the attic of the home above the panel box, and the cause remains under investigation. On Wednesday, October 2nd, at approximately 0200, Engine 5 responded to a residential fire with a report of a trapped female teenager still inside on Millbrook Court in the Lanstown Commons area of the city. Her reports were that there was somebody trapped on the second floor. Pretty reliable reports. Police had already reported that it confirmed somebody on the second floor. Uh, crews went to work immediately. Uh, 18 started putting water on the fire. 5 and 21 made uh, an interior to uh, the number 2 floor where they found uh, um, uh, a lady uh, that was uh, in the second floor bedroom on the BC corner. The squad company came around the back, the VES from the second floor with Fives crew uh, ascended the ladder. At that time, all crews met up in the bedroom. Uh, the uh, patient was brought down the rear um, uh, ladders uh, on the Charlie side. Uh, patient was in cardiac arrest and, uh, and was started resuscitation was done by the firefighters and EMS. Uh, good fire attack by the, um, arriving in, uh, the arriving crews. Fire was knocked down very quickly. Uh, at this point, we have investigators on scene, clear cause and origin. Uh, just great overall attack, very coordinated training staff. Gave us the tools today to do our job to uh, make the citizens here a little safer. The teenager involved sadly succumbed to her injuries and subsequently died in the hospital. The cause of the fire is still being investigated. On Wednesday, October 2nd, around 1300, Engine 18 was dispatched for a reported residential fire in the 3500 block of Purebred Drive. Upon arrival, crews found minimal smoke showing on this Charlie Delta corner of the home. Engine 18 forced entry through the front door with an attack line and extinguished the fire in the living room of the home. Primary and secondary searches were conducted and came back all clear. Overhaul was completed and the home was placarded. There were no firefighter or civilian injuries and the cause of the fire is under investigation. On Sunday, October 6th, around 2040, Police, fire, and EMS units responded to a multi-vehicle crash off of Livingston Oak Drive in the Charlestown Lakes south section of the city. Engine 19 arrived on scene and provided initial vehicle stabilization. A total of three vehicles were involved, two of which were being driven and one parked vehicle. One vehicle had overturned on its side, trapping the driver. Squad 10 and Ladder 9 arrived on scene and assisted in removing the patient. No individuals were transported to the hospital. The cause of the crash is under investigation by the Virginia Beach Police Department. On Tuesday, October 8th, around 1215, county units assisted Knott's Island Fire Department with a working structure fire in Currituck, North Carolina. 
While en route, Knott's Island units informed our crews they had a single-story house well involved with fire. Upon arrival, there was heavy fire visible from the front and rear of the structure. The Knott's Island crew had an inch and three-quarter hand line on the rear of the home. Battalion 4 units arrived on scene and initiated defensive operations. The fire was knocked down and VBFD crews assisted with overhaul. All residents were reported clear of the home. The structure was placarded and turned over to the Knott's Island Fire Department. The cause of the fire remains undetermined. That wraps up this latest edition of VBFD News Updates. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe.